evening and welcome to worship with the congregation of the Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel. We are glad you can be with us here for Ash Wednesday as we begin the season of Lent and prepare our hearts and our minds and our lives for Holy Week and Easter. We remember tonight that, we are, that God loves us so much that we are allowed to turn our lives around to begin again not just once, but many times. If you are out in Zoom world following along with us, you'll see the bulletin on your screen, and it will continue to scroll through as we go through worship. We invite you to read aloud with us the lines in bold print and sing along with us for the songs. Well, just one or two songs tonight. There is no offertory this evening. Um, but you're welcome to enter into the dis spiritual discipline of giving using the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app, which you can find through Google or on your phone's app store, and then enter Presbyterian Church at Peace Chapel, and it will help you set up electronic giving. Or you may just send checks to 1212 Livingston Avenue in North Brunswick, 08902. We begin. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of God is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. But there's also this. It's not too late, says God. Come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping, sorry for your sins. Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why. God is kind and merciful. God takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. This most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to forgive. Who knows? Maybe God will do it now. Turn around and show pity. Maybe when all's said and done, there will be blessings full and robust for our God. Chris is going to play through the psalm, and then we will all sing you may stand if you feel up standing or stay, stay seated and sing. Grant me your wisdom, teach 
reach my heart your secrets from my sins purge me purify and heal me with joy and gladness create a clean heart make my spirit steadfast take not your presence or your spirit from me save and sustain me that my tongue may tell forth your ways to my lips, Lord, help me sing your praises, burn sacrifices, offer you no pleasure, but you will not scorn humble contrite spirits. Such I wish you grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. During Lent, we will be singing our prayer for illumination. I'm going to sing through this once and then invite you all to sing with me the second time. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen for a word from God in this portion of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, desiring knowledge of my ways like a nation that acted righteously, that didn't abandon their God. They ask me for righteous judgments, not for wanting to be close to their God. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility? A to put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A fast day that I, God, would like? Isn't this the fast that I choose? Releasing wicked restraints? Untying the ropes of a yoke? Setting free the mistreated and breaking every yoke? Isn't sharing your bread with the hungry and bringing the homeless poor into your house what I seek? Covering the naked when you see them and not hiding them from your own family? Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteous will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and I'll say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the finger pointing, the wicked speech, if you open your heart to the hungry and provide abundantly for those who are afflicted, 
your light will shine in the darkness, and your gloom will be like the noon. I will always show up where you go. I will show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places, firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. If you watch your step on the Sabbath, and don't use my holy day for your personal advantage. If you treat the Sabbath day as a day of joy, God's holy day is a celebration. If you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God. Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestor Jacob. Yes. God says so. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We hear the horn blow, a flag on the play, or somebody doesn't like our driving. We just know we'd better turn around and see what's going wrong. And the answer is everything. Even what we're trying to do right, we get wrong. And even our attempts to apologize end up focused on ourselves, on how we look. So why are we here, saying we're sorry, putting on these ashes? Well, if we are putting them on so that others see how good we are at being sorry, we have it wrong. If we are putting them on as insurance against the status quo, as some sort of get out of hell free card, a mark on our foreheads, we have it wrong. But while God tells us we're doing it wrong, God doesn't walk away from us. We hear the horn. We turn around to find out how we're wrong and we find out we can turn back to God. God shows us the way. Focus on others. Focus on justice. Turn around what we do. Turn around how we live. Turn away from ourselves and turn toward others. God shows us the way. The ashes aren't a mark of our piety, but of where we, but of where we were headed while God didn't give up. Listen for a word from God in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So when you do good to other people, don't hire a trumpeter to go in front of you like those play actors in the synagogues and the streets who make sure that they may get praise from people. I assure you that's the only reward they'll get. When you help someone out, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Just do it quietly and unobtrusively. This is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you pray, don't rattle off long prayers like the pagans who think they will be heard because they use so many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows what you need before you ask. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so that people will know they are fasting. I assure you, they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face. Then you won't look like you are fasting to people, but only to your Father, who is present in that secret place. 
your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Don't pile up treasures on earth where moth and rust can eat them and thieves break in and steal. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven where moth and rust don't eat them and where thieves don't break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. But if you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a musty cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you will have. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the, to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and money both. That's why I say to you, don't worry about living, wondering what you are going to eat or drink or what you are going to wear. Surely life is more than important than food and the body more important than the clothes you wear. Look at the birds in the sky. They never sow nor reap nor store away in barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much more valuable to God than they are? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They neither work nor weave, but I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was never arrayed like one of these. If God dresses the grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? So don't worry and don't keep saying, what shall we eat and what shall we drink and what shall we wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's reign and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. When we are doing it all for what we can do for ourselves, we hear the horn turn around. No matter if it's praying or helping or saving or dressing, if we do it for ourselves, we've gone wrong. But we can turn back to God. We can help for the sake of helping. We can pray to get stronger. We can save and dress for what we need instead of for how we look or for status or for scoring. The ashes tonight remind us that even when we've sunk this far, we can turn back to God. The ashes remind us of the wrong turn we never want to make again. Let's turn back to God's something better. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your Spirit, to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of God, your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. We hear these words, but we do not always listen. We know the way to peace, yet we often lose our way. And so God, who is faithful and just, allows us to turn our lives around, 
to confess, be forgiven, and start again. And so let us now confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet using the prayer we find in our leaflets and on our screens. Let us pray. We who have gone astray because we are distracted or stubborn, hear you calling us back, O God. We hear your word, your way to live in peace, but we have lost our way, lost sight of your will, lost hope for what can be, resigning ourselves to what we think must be. For all the wrong turns we have taken, forgive us, O God, for all the ways we have denied true life. Forgive us, O God, for all our short-sightedness and willful blindness. Forgive us, O God, for all the times we failed to notice your care. Forgive us, O God, for all the occasions when we thought we knew better. Forgive us, O God. God, turn us around and make a fresh start in us. Open our eyes to your real presence in our lives, our world, our history. Lead us in your true way that we might live your new life and share it with all the world. Hear these words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Remember these things, O Jacob, Take it seriously, Israel, that you are my servant. I made you, shaped you. You're my servant. O oh, Israel, I'll never forget you. God has wiped the slate of our wrongdoings. There is nothing left of our sins. Come back to me, says God. Come back. I've redeemed you. Believe this good news and live in peace. I invite us to gather around the font, please. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes remind us of our mortality and penitence and teach us again that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Would you, please? Right up there.
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, we know our only hope is in you, and our comfort in life and in death is in belonging to your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us turn in our Lenten journey from hopelessness to hope, from self-concern to other concern, from empty conformity to radical discipleship. Even as we bear these ashes on our bodies, remind us that you have washed away the ashes on our souls, calling us to faithful life with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this night and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.